Hi, Assalamualaikum everyone. So now we are in module 2. So this module will consist of our four uh, parts. So make sure you watch all our parts in this uh, module which is focused on the internet and the websites. Okay, so let's start with the first video. Why? Okay, hi. So today I will continue my lecture with uh, module 2 connecting and communicating online okay now uh, without further ado let's start so this is my usual reminder so you may use your earphones or earbuds for better audio okay so these are the objectives of for uh, today's lecture so first of all i want to discuss the evolution of the internet then i will proceed with the various uh, broadband internet connections and I will end up the first part of this video with the purpose of an IP address and its relationship to a domain name. Okay, so let's start with the first slide. So, one of the major reasons a business whom and other users purchase computers and mobile devices is for internet access. Internet is a worldwide collection of networks that connects millions of businesses, government agencies, educational institutions and individuals today billions of home and business users around the world access a variety of services on the internet using computers and mobile devices the web messaging and video communications are some of the more widely used internet services other internet services include chat rooms discussion forums and file transfer now let's move to the evolution of the internet the internet has its roots in a networking project started by the Pentagon's Advanced Research Project Agency or ARPA. ARPA's goal was to build a network that first allowed scientists at different physical locations to share information and work together on military and scientific projects. And two, it could function even if part of the network were disabled or destroyed by a disaster such as a nuclear attack. The network called ARPANET became a functional in September 1969. By 1984, Apana had more than 1,000 individual computers linked as posts. Today, millions of posts connect to this network, which now is known as the internet. Users can connect their computers and mobile devices to the internet through wired or wireless technology. With wired connections, a computer or device physically attaches via a cable or wire to a communications device such as a modem. For wireless connections, many mobile computers and devices include the necessary built-in technology so that they can transmit data and other items wirelessly. Computers without this capability can use a wireless modem or other communications device that enables wireless connectivity. A wireless modem uses a wireless communications technology such as cellular radio, satellite, or Wi-Fi to connect to the internet. The wireless modem shown in the figure 2.2 is known as a dongle, which is a small device that connects to a computer and enables additional functions when attached. Today, users often connect to the internet via broadband internet service because of its fast data transfer feeds and is always on connection. Users can download web pages quickly, play online games, communicate in real time with others, and more. You can refer to Table 2.1 in terms of the wired and wireless technology. So for wired, we have Cable Internet Service, Digital Subscriber Line or DSL, and FTTP or Fiber to the Premises. Whereby for wireless, we have Wi-Fi or Wireless Fidelity, Mobile Broadband, Fixed Wireless, and satellite internet service. Many public locations such as shopping malls, coffee shops, restaurants, schools, airports, hotels and city parks have a Wi-Fi hotspot. A hotspot is a wireless network that provides internet connections to mobile computers and devices. Now, connecting wirelessly to a public hotspot at your local coffee shop or at airport can be convenient and practical. Using this free service can be risky, however, because cyber criminals may lurk in public Wi-Fi hotspot, hoping to gain access to your confidential information on your computer or mobile device. 
So as a user, you need to follow certain guidelines for a safer browsing experience such as First, avoid typing password and financial information. Two, sign out of a website. Three, disable your wireless connection. Do not leave your computer or mobile device unattended and beware of over-the-shoulder snooper. Home and small business users can share and provide wireless internet connections by creating their own Wi-Fi hotspot through a communications device in the home or business that is connected to broadband internet service. Users that opt to create mobile hotspot to mobile broadband internet service may use via a separate communications device or a tethered internet capable device, as you can see in Figure 2.3. Tethering transforms a smartphone or internet capable tablet into a portable communications device that shares its internet access with another computers and devices wirelessly. An internet service provider or ISP is a business that provides individuals and organizations access to the internet free or for a fee. ISPs often charge a fixed amount for an internet connection, offering customers a variety of plans based on desired speeds, bandwidth, and services. In addition, ISPs may include additional services such as email and online storage. Bandwidth is a measure of the capability of a network to send and receive data. A high bandwidth connection transmits more data than a low bandwidth connection during the same time period. Data sizes typically are stated in terms of megabytes and gigabytes. A megabyte is equal to approximately 1 million characters and a gigabyte is equal to approximately 1 billion characters. You can refer to table 2.2 that shows the data usage for various internet activities. A mobile service provider, sometimes called a wireless data provider, is an ISP that offers wireless internet access to computers and mobile devices with the necessary built-in wireless capability, wireless modems, or other communications devices that enables wireless connectivity. Now let's look on how data travels the internet. If you can refer in figure 2.4, it shows the detail. The inner structure of the internet works much like a transportation system. Just as interstate highways connect major cities and carry the bulk of the automotive traffic across the country, several main transmission media carry the heaviest amount of traffic or communications activity on the internet. These major carriers of network traffic are known collectively as the internet backbone. The transmission media that make up the internet backbone exchange data at several different major cities across the country. They transfer data from one network to another until reaching the final destination. Now let's move to IP addresses and domain names. The internet relies on an addressing system much like the postal service to send data to a computer or device at a specific destination. An IP address, short for Internet Protocol Address, is a sequence of numbers that uniquely identifies the location of each computer or device connected to the internet or any other network. As the lengthy IP addresses can be difficult to remember, the internet supports domain names. A domain name is a text-based name that corresponds to the IP address of a server such as a web server that hosts a website. A domain name is part of the web address that you type in a browser address bar to access a website. The suffix of the domain name, called the top-level domain, identifies the type of organization associated with the domain. The domain name system is the method that the internet uses to store domain names and their corresponding IP addresses. When you enter a domain name, for example, google.com in a browser, a DNS server translates the domain name to its associated IP address so that the request can be routed to the correct computer. A DNS server is a server on the internet that usually is associated with an ISP, as you can see in figure 2.6. So that's all for the first part of uh, this module. I will continue with the next part in the consequent video. Bye.